Getting ready for our 60 minute vinyasa body medicine. This is an all round body experience really, this practice. So when you're ready, just come to sit on the heels and bring the hands together in a prayer position or Anjali Mudra at the heart space. Setting your intention, your dedication or offering for this practice. Anything you're working on in life right now or on your yoga mat, that can help be your focus. When you're ready with an exhalation, you'll release the hands down. And then on an inhale, open the heart towards the sky. As you exhale, bow the forehead towards the earth, just bowing in this practice. Making your way back to a neutral position, the spine will be uplifted, the shoulders descending down. You'll start to raise your arms up with the biceps next to the ears. Try to soften the muscles around the base of your neck and wrap the outer arms in towards the face. Pull the belly and rib cage in. Keep thinking of being grounded on the heels or if you're sitting on a block, then grounded on the block. Lift and lengthen through the side body. Extend all the way through to the fingertips. Keep breathing calmly. Lengthen the back of the neck. And then on an exhalation, start to lower the arms down. Make your way to tabletop position. The hands will be underneath the shoulders, the knees underneath the hips. Inhale, open the heart towards the sky. Exhale, tailbone tucks, belly pulls in. You're gonna press into the floor and dome your upper back. Inhale, heart opens to the sky. Exhale, tailbone tucks, belly pulls in. You're gonna press and round. Inhale, heart peels through the arms, slightly looking up. Exhale, tailbone tucks, belly pulls in again, press and dome. Inhale again. And exhale. Inhale, open. And exhale, coil in. Make your way back to a neutral position. Find the sternum reaching forward, the crown reaching forward, the shoulders gliding down your back as you extend the right heel towards the back of your mat. The heel is in line with your hip. Reach the left arm forwards with the left bicep next to the ear as you inhale. Then as you exhale, bring the elbow towards the knee. Inhale, reach, lengthen and extend. Exhale, elbow to knee. Again, inhale, reach, lengthen, extend, and exhale, elbow to knee. This time you'll inhale, reach, lengthen, and extend. Lower your left hand back to the floor, your right toes to the back of the mat. Spin the right heel down, and then inhale, raise the right arm up. Exhale, reach it forwards, and circle. Inhale, sweep the right arm up. Exhale, sweep it forwards and down, just lubricating the shoulder joint. Inhale, sweep the right arm up. Exhale, sweep the arm down to the floor, lower the right knee to the floor. Setting up for the other side, extend the left heel back, the heel in line with the hip. Right arm reaches forwards, bicep next to the ear, inhale. The exhale brings the elbow to knee. Inhale, reach, lengthen and extend. Exhale, elbow coils to knee. Inhale, reach, lengthen, extend. Exhale, elbow to knee. This time you reach, lengthen and extend and lower your right hand down, left toes to the back of the mat. Drop the left heel. Sweep the left arm up and then reach it forward. Stretch out the side body as you exhale. Circle it towards the mat. Keep going, inhale, sweep it up and then forwards. Exhale, circle it around. Free the shoulder as you inhale, sweep it up. Exhale, circle it all the way down. Lower the left knee. When you're ready, curl up the toes, inhale. Peel yourself back to downward facing dog on your exhale. Make any movements or adjustments or whatever you feel like you need to do if this is the first downward facing dog of your day. Making sure you press your palms down flat into the mat. Again, wrapping the outer arms in towards the face. Feel like the forearms are lifting up out of the wrist joints. You'll lengthen through the side body, through the spine, all the way to the hips. You're going to reach your thighs back. Send the heels down towards the mat. 
Just notice the stretch down the back of your legs. Notice the current of the breath as you draw the rib cage and belly in towards the spine. And really press the hands into the floor with every exhalation. Just keep breathing calmly, smoothly. And you're going to coil forwards and find yourself into a plank position. Think of radiating back through the heels as the crown reaches forwards. It feels like when you inhale, you activate the core and draw energy in. When you exhale, you radiate from the core and expand that energy out. Inhale, draw energy in. Exhale, radiate that energy out. Again, inhale, activate the core. Exhaling, you'll expand from the core. When you're ready, you shift forwards from the toes on an inhale. Slowly as you can, lower all the way down to your mat. Untuck the toes, setting up for cobra pose. Inhale, hug the arms in towards the ribs as you lift the head and chest. Exhale, soften back down to the mat. Again, inhale, peel up the head and chest, but keep pressing the tops of the feet down. Exhale, release back down. Last time, lengthen the buttocks to the heels. Inhale, peel up the head and chest, lengthen the rib cage forwards. And then exhale, soften down. Curl up the toes, awaken the legs and core as you inhale. As you exhale, press to plank in one piece. Stay for your inhale in plank, and then downward facing dog comes on your exhale. Settle the breath. Next inhale, raise your right leg up, and feel the left heel descend. As you exhale, you lower the right leg down. Inhale, raise the left leg up. Notice the right heel descend. And then on your exhale, you'll lower the left leg down. Start to walk your feet up towards your hands, bringing the feet together between the hands. Find a halfway lift, lengthen the spine, hands on shins for the first one if you need to. And then exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Again, inhale, Ada Uttanasana, lengthening. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Again, inhale, Ada, send the sternum and crown forwards, the shoulders back. And exhale, fold, Uttanasana, hips above the ankles. Now slowly, when you're ready, come to a halfway lift and send the arms out to the sides. Wait for the inhale to send the arms all the way up to the sky. Keep reaching from the heels to the fingertips, wrapping the outer arms into the face. Maybe the palms will touch, maybe you'll gaze up towards the thumbs. On an exhale, bring the hands to rest at the heart space, reminding yourself of your intention, and then releasing the hands by the sides. Inhale, press down through the feet and raise the arms out and up, maybe gaze up. Exhale, swan dive, circle the hands down to the floor, folding in Uttanasana. Ripple through the spine, find a halfway lift, inhale. And then step the right foot back and the left foot back to plank pose. Shift forwards, inhale, your chaturanga now, exhale. Rise in upward facing dog or cobra if you prefer again. Pull from the core and make your way back to your downward facing dog. Settle the gaze between your feet, which are hip distance apart. Find that power in your legs as you reach your thighs back. Feel again that the belly and rib cage are drawing into the spine and feel that the arms are nice and strong and straight pressing the hands through the floor. Now, on your next inhalation, you'll send the gaze forwards, but reach the hips back, soften the legs. As you exhale, just step with big steps, both feet forwards and together between the hands. Halfway lift, inhale. Seal it off and fold as you exhale. Inhale, reach the arms out and all the way up to the sky again. Press down through the feet, wake up the legs. Exhale, draw that energy to rest in front of the heart. In 
Inhale, take the arms back out and up, Udva Hastasana. Exhale, dive, taking the hands out and down towards the mat, folding in Uttanasana. Ada Uttanasana, inhale, ripple through the spine and lengthen the crown forward, shoulders back. And step the left foot back and then the right foot back, coming to plank pose. Shift forwards, inhale, Chaturanga, exhale. Rise upward or cobra inhaling. Use your core to travel back to your downward facing dog, exhaling. Settle the breath, nice and calm, ujjayi. Settle the gaze so the mind starts to also settle. Refine your alignment by pressing the palms down, drawing the forearms up out of the wrists, wrapping the outer arms towards the face. Find that length through the side body and spine all the way to your hips. Reach your thighs back to send the heels down. Next inhale, gaze forwards, reach the hips back. On your exhale, big steps, both feet forwards and together between the hands. Hara Uttanasana, inhale. Fold, exhale. Inhale, reach the arms out and all the way up to the sky again. Draw the belly and rib cage in. As you exhale, bring the hands to rest at the heart. Inhale, take the arms all the way back up, gathering that energy from the feet to the fingers. Exhale, dive, take it down to the earth as you fold. Ada Uttanasana, inhale, lengthen, extend through the spine. And then calmly just step back to plank pose. Shift forwards, inhale as slow as you can, chaturanga, and exhale. Inhale, upward facing, thighs lift, feet drive back. Pull from the core, exhale, downward facing dog. Settle the breath again, nice and calm. Refine your alignment. Making subtle adjustments as needed. Settle into your experience of your practice. Letting the practice become healing for whatever's happening in your life right now. Body, mind and breath united. Next inhale, take the gaze forwards and reach the hips back. Exhale, step both feet again forwards and together between the hands. Ada Uttanasana, inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach your arms all the way back up, Udva Hastasana. Exhale, bring the hands to heart center. Now, inhale, take the arms back up. Exhale, take the hands back down and fold. Keep following with your breath, Ada Uttanasana. Inhale, step back to blank pose. Notice how I'm raising one leg at a time, nice and high, almost like a standing splits. Follow your vinyasa and we'll meet back in your downward facing dog. Letting the mind settle, letting the breath settle, letting the body settle into this experience never forcing, never straining, just following the flow of your breath. Next inhale, take the gaze forwards, reach the hips back. Then you'll step with big steps, both feet forwards and together between the hands. Ada, inhale, exhale, fold. Inhale, reach the arms all the way back up, gathering the energy. Exhale, release the hands down. Then you're going to bend both legs, inhale, raise the arms, come to Utkatasana, fierce pose. Now bend your legs as much as you can, think of resisting the shins back slightly. Lift the pelvis up towards the lower ribs and think of again lengthening from the hips through the spine, through the arms. Interlace your fingers behind your back, inhale, open the chest. And then on an exhale, you'll fold, taking the interlace fingers over the head as far as you can. Glide the shoulders down your back so your neck is spacious. Maybe you're working at straightening your legs a little bit. Send the weight slightly forwards into the front of the feet. And when you're ready, next.
next exhale take the hands to the earth and then inhale raise the left leg up exhale step the left foot back and drop the left knee untuck the toe now pick the pelvis up towards the lower ribs again so finding the belly pull in and the tail descend down when you're ready inhale raise the arms up and think of again the palms may be touching or hand shoulder distance and then you're going to send your right arm under your left in an eagle bind inhale lift the elbows forwards and up exhale melt the shoulders down inhale lift elbows forwards and up exhale melt shoulders down finding this pulsation with the eagle arms and exhale free the bind of the arms when you're ready inhale sweep the arms back up and on an exhale circle the arms down to the floor so really just lubricating the shoulders as you straighten the front leg coming to Ada Hanumanasana now think of lengthening through the spine, gliding the shoulders down towards your hips. If you need to use blocks or props or keep that front leg a little, bait, a little bit bent, you can just do that. When you're ready, start to re-bend the right leg, lift the chest. And then you're going to send the right knee back next to the left, walking the hands forwards for Anahatasana. Melt your heart, your chin or your forehead to the earth, keeping the hips above the knees, keeping the hands about shoulder distance apart. Maybe the forehead down if it's kind of crunching the neck. Sometimes it feels better to have the forehead down. Just follow what you need to do with your practice, your body. When you're ready, you're going to coil forwards into a forearm plank, curling up the toes, straightening the legs and drawing energy in. On an exhale, you'll radiate from the center. Again, inhale, activate the core, drawing in. Exhale, expand from the core. This is the forearm plank pulsation. One more time. Exhaling, radiate out. When you're ready, you're going to release your hips to the floor. Untuck the toes for Sphinx Pose. Lift your heart with one breath as you press the forehead down and drive your legs back in the Sphinx. On an exhale, release the forehead to the earth. Interlace your fingers behind your back like we did with that Utkatasana variation. Now inhale, reach the knuckles back, lift your head and chest. Really drive the legs back. Maybe you want to lift the legs up. Think of sending the inner thighs towards the sky. Nice straight legs. Keep long through the back of the neck. Keep lifting as you lengthen. Next exhale, bring the hands next to the lower ribs as the feet touch the earth and then rise, inhale, upward dog. Exhale, pull back to downward facing dog. Settle the breath nice and calm. Now start to walk your hands back towards your feet and we're going to press walk to the top so take the hands about a foot foot and a half in front of the feet shift the weight forwards into the hands lift the heels try to float the feet between the hands press walk press walk press walk all the way to the top of the mat if you need to bend your legs or do little hops that's okay just think of sending the hips above the shoulders compressing the chest to the thighs as you lift the heels Find a halfway lift when you get to the top. Fold, exhale. You'll bend both legs, inhale, sweep the arms back up to Utkatasana. And then when you're ready, fold again, Uttanasana. Inhale, raise the right leg up, standing splits. Exhale, step the right foot back and drop the right knee, untuck the toe. Find the pelvic tilt again towards the lower ribs, tail descends. Inhale, sweep the arms up, Anjaneyasana, and this time we'll swing the left arm under the right, taking those eagle arms. Find the bind if you can, or grab opposite shoulders. The inhale lifts the elbows forwards and up. Exhale, melts the shoulders down. Inhale, elbows forwards and up. Exhale, melt the shoulders down. Again, inhale, exhale.
freeing the bind of the arms. Inhale, sweep them out and up. Maybe gaze up as the palms touch. Circle the hands down, straighten the left leg as best you can. Ada Hanumanasana. Remember you're looking for length, especially with the inhale, you want to visualize that length traveling through the spine. The exhale, you surrender a little bit deeper over that left leg. Always modify if you need to bend the front leg or use props. Also look after the knee. When you're ready, re-bend the front leg, inhale, lift the heart. Then you'll send the left knee back next to the right, Anahatasana. Walk the hands forwards, inhale, coil in. Melt the heart, chin or forehead to the earth on your exhale. Keep those hips above the knees, keep the hands shoulder distance. Stretch the fingers forwards as the heart reaches towards the earth. like we did before your coil forwards forearms down curl up the toes straighten the legs radiate from the core in an exhale inhale draw energy into the core exhale radiate from the core again inhale draw energy in exhale radiate out release the hips to the floor untuck the toes sphinx again lift the heart drive the legs back release to the earth on and exhale Interlace the fingers behind your back again. Reach your knuckles back. This time you're going to bend your legs. Think of sending your feet to the sky. Inhale, lift your head, chest and thighs up off the mat. Try to lift your thighs as best you can. Try to reach the knuckles to the space between your calves. Keep the back of the neck long. Keep lifting the chest. Now on an exhalation, you're going to drive your legs back straight to the back of your mat, but keep your thighs up. Then you'll bring your hands next to your lower ribs. Let the tops of the feet touch as you inhale, rise, straighten the arms, and then pull back to downward facing dog on your exhale. Settle, calm breath. Now, practicing jumping to the top of the mat. If that's not for you, you're just gonna walk Otherwise, take the gaze forwards, reach the hips back, soften the legs. Now try to get your hips stacked over your shoulders as you tuck, jump up, bringing the heels towards the butt. You might catch a little bit of air time. If you're comfortable with handstands, you could extend your legs nice and straight, finding balance here on your hands. Otherwise, just keep trying the tuck jumps or slowly walk and wait in the forward fold. When you're ready, you'll lower your feet down to your hands. Halfway lift, inhale and fold, exhale. Inhale, reach the arms all the way back up. And then as you exhale, bring it all back to center again. Always return back to center. Inhale, take the arms back up. Exhale, flow the hands down. Inhale, raise the left leg up, standing splits. Exhale, step the left foot back, bending the right leg. Now, Vera Crescent, inhale, sweep the arms up. Now think of drawing the pelvis up towards the lower ribs, and if you can, cross at your wrists and bring your palms together. So it's like a reverse Udva Hastasana. Think of pulling the arms apart so the palms press together because the wrists are crossed. Find that strengthening the shoulders. Next exhale, release the hands down to the mat. Straighten your front leg as best you can, pyramid. Looking for that length and extension along your right leg. Rebend the right leg, send the chest through the arms. Find plank or one-legged plank. Chaturanga on an exhale. Upward facing inhale. Downward facing, exhale. Raise the left leg up, inhale. Coil it through, step it through for Vera Crescent. Now inhale, sweep the arms up, cross the wrist the other way, press the palms together. 
Try to pull the arms apart. Think of this strengthening the shoulders, nice straight arms if you can. Climb up from the hips all the way through the torso, but descend in the front leg. Energize the back leg. On an exhale, take the hands down, straighten your left leg, pyramid. Find that length and extension. Every exhale, it feels like you just surrender over the front leg. Start to re-bend your left leg, send your chest through your arms. Now you'll step forward, standing splits, lift the right leg up. Exhale, lower the right leg down. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach the arms all the way up to the sky again. Press down through the feet, waking up the legs. Hands come to heart, exhale. Inhale, take the arms all the way back up, Udva Hastasana, back to the flow. As you exhale, take the hands down to the earth and fold. Now inhale, raise the right leg up, standing splits. Exhale, step the right foot back, bending the left leg. Now inhale, sweep the arms up again, reverse Udva Hastasana, crossing at the wrists. And then exhale, take the hands down and straighten the front leg, pyramid. Straight away, re-bend the front leg, send the heart through the arms, plank, one-legged plank, chaturanga, exhale, upward facing, and then back to downward facing dog. On an inhalation, you'll raise the right leg up, coil it through, step it through, heel toe as best you can. Stay on the back toes, inhale, sweep the arms up, Vera Crescent with reverse Udva Hastasana. And then on an exhalation, you'll take the hands down and straighten the right leg pyramid. Start to re-bend your right leg and send your chest through your arms. Shift the weight forwards, pick the left leg up, standing splits, and then lower the left foot down and fold. Halfway lift, fold on your exhale. Bend both legs, inhale, sweep the arms up, Utkatasana. Sit down even deeper, keep reaching through the fingertips as you sit down, making a way to Navasana, boat pose. Option to grab the back of your legs if you need to, or just keep your legs straight, arms straight. Now come to Ardhanavasana, halfway down, on an exhale, come back up. Inhale, come down halfway. Exhale, come back up. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, up. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, up. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, up. Inhale, halfway. Stay. If you're still feeling strong, Raise the arms up above your head, biceps next to your ears. Radiate from toes to fingertips. Find this dish shape, feel the core switch on. Rock the dish shape, keep the core engaged. When you're ready, rock and roll. Back to Utkatasana, use your hands if you need to. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Now finding crow pose, bring the knees into the upper arms, come onto the toes. Send the gaze forward, sternum slightly forward, shoulders back as you lift the feet. Option to stay. Option to lower the crown of the head lightly into the mat for tripod headstand. Hug the elbows in towards each other like you're doing chaturanga and then extend your legs up to the sky. Keep working the elbows towards each other like you're squeezing an imaginary block between the arms. When you're ready, you'll lower your knees back onto the upper arms. See if you can lift your head and find crow pose again. Now, when you're ready, exhale, chaturanga, drive your legs back, sternum forwards, upward dog, and then back to downward facing dog. Settle the breath, settle the gaze, reestablish the connection to the inner source of your strength. When you're ready, You'll start to slowly walk your hands back towards your feet. 
inhale, raise the right leg up, standing splits. Option to keep both hands grounded or wrap the left arm around your left calf. And then exhale, lower it down. Other side, inhale, raise the left leg up. Option to wrap the right arm around the right calf or just keep both hands down in the floor. Then when you're ready, you'll lower the left foot back down. Walk the hands forwards, lower your knees to the floor. Walk the hands forwards again and come back to Anahatasana, lowering the heart, chin or forehead to the earth. Take a moment to settle the breath, open the shoulders, lengthen the spine. Now making the way to dolphin pose. So shift forward, shoulders are above the elbows. Try to keep the elbows shoulder distance apart, not wider than. And then you walk your feet in. Kind of like downward dog, but the forearms are down into the floor. If you're still feeling good, you'll lift your right leg up. You might come onto your left tippy toes. Now try not to lose control here. A little hop might be okay, but nothing too major. You want to stack your hips over your shoulders and send both feet up towards the sky. You'll pull the belly and rib cage in, keep pressing the forearms down. Try to think of a nice straight line like a plumb line. When you're ready, you'll slowly lower your legs down and find the forearm plank position. Now slide your right hand back so the longest finger of your right hand is in line with your left elbow. So your right arm's in chaturanga, but the left arm's still in forearm plank, and you radiate back through the heels, forwards through the crown and sternum. Swap sides, put the right forearm down, left hand back, so the longest finger of your left hand's in line with the right elbow. Left arm's in chaturanga, right arm's forearm plank. Then place the left forearm back down, and then release the hips to the floor, untuck the toes for sphinx. Lift the heart in sphinx and drive the legs back and release the forehead to the earth. Take the hands in prayer above the crown of the head, pranam, full body surrender to the earth. Catch with the breath. When you're ready, bend both legs, reach back and grab the outsides of the feet for Dhanurasana bow pose. Kicking the feet back to lift the chest up. Keep kicking the legs back to lift the chest, lift the thighs. Use the power of the legs to lift the chest. Follow your breath. Next exhale, release the legs back, hands next to the lower ribs, and on an inhale, rise upward facing dog. And then exhale, pull back to your downward facing dog. Settle the spine down, reach the hips back. Next inhale, raise the right leg up, three-legged dog. And you'll think of a jump switch where you catch a little bit of an L shape and you're gonna switch your legs in the air to bring the right foot forwards between the hands, left foot back. Finding a way to warrior two, the left arm's gonna pick you up and you'll settle into a nice deep warrior two. Heel to heel alignment with the right hip hugging in towards the midline and the right thigh working towards a nice right angle. Arms at equal height, energy radiates up through the spine through the crown of the head. Tune into that nice vera quality, that inner strength. Now start to straighten the right leg and reverse the triangle. Reach your right arm towards the back, breathe into the right rib cage. Come back to a neutral position and shift your right hip back to your inner left thigh and place your hand down towards the floor or block. Sweep the left arm down and up and then back and down again. Use the breath, inhale, reach it forwards and up. Exhale, circle it back and down. Inhale, reach it forwards and up. Trikonasana pose. Glide the shoulders down your back, lengthen the crown of the head, out of the hip. Draw the energy in through the feet and legs. Radiate it through the spine. 
lift the pelvis towards the lower ribs and then reach that left arm diagonally forwards for that beautiful side stretch through the side body. Circle the left hand to the left hip, making your way to Ardha Chandrasana. Bend the right leg, shift the weight forwards as you pick the left foot up off the floor. Now, once the left shoulder is stacked on top of the right, you could raise your left arm up and really radiate back through the left heel. Get nice and steady, focused and grounded through the right foot. Then circle the left hand down to the floor, square the hips for standing splits. You could stay here or work with pressing up to handstand. Pressing the palms down into the floor, lift the right heel. See if you can use a little bit of momentum to pick your right foot up off the floor. Finding that L shape or maybe joining the feet together. Adha Mukha Vrikshasana. Slowly lower your feet down towards your hands. Find a halfway lift, inhale. And then fold, exhale. Grabbing the big toes with the first two fingers. Finding Padangustasana. Now when you're ready, straighten the arms, poke the chest through. Keep a hold of the right big toe, but bring your left hand on your left hip. Shift the weight into your left foot, stand up carrying your right leg with you for Utita Hasta Parangustasana. Draw the right shoulder back into its socket, stand very tall. If it's too much to hold the right big toe, just hold onto the right knee instead. Next exhale, you're going to open your foot or knee out to the right. Maybe you gaze over the left shoulder, you could extend the left arm out to the left as a counterbalance as well. Get steady through the left foot. Now bring your gaze and your leg back to center. Take your biceps up next to your ears. Find that L-shaped handstand position again, but we're just facing the other way, standing on the left foot. Now sweep that right leg behind you, trying to find that heel in line with the hip like we did at the very beginning. Torso work towards parallel to the floor, arms reaching forwards, warrior three pose. Next exhale, take the hands to the floor, standing splits, and then step the right foot back. Now, when you're ready, inhale, raise the left leg up, lower the right forearm down, and slide the left hand back so the longest finger of the left hand's in line with the right elbow. Stay where you are, or try to pick the right foot up off the floor. Funky pincher pose, or funky peacock. Press down through the right forearm, hug the elbows towards each other slightly, and then slowly lower back down, find downward facing dog. Shift into plank, chaturanga exhale, upward facing, and then pull from the core, travel back to downward facing dog. I'm pedaling out the legs here just because I had a bit of a spinal issue that day. I had a lot of tension in my lower back, so feel free to adapt. Now preparing for jump switch on the other side. When you're ready, on an inhale, you'll raise the left leg up. Now you send the gaze forward, still a little hop from the right leg. Find a little bit of air time. This could happen just by a step if you need to. And you want to try to find a little bit of air time in an L shape. You'll switch your legs, bringing the left foot down between the hands and the right foot back, setting up for warrior two, back heel down, left hip firms in, right arm picks you up. Find that nice deep warrior two with that heel to heel alignment, making sure that the back toes are slightly turned in. Energy again rises up the spine and radiates out the arms and through the crown of the head. Explore your depth of your front leg. Now you'll slowly start to straighten left leg, reversing the triangle. Right hand slides down right leg as you breathe into left rib cage and come back to neutral position, shifting the left hip back to the inner right thigh. Left hand goes down to the mat and then circle the right hand down, forwards, then up. Exhale, circle it back and down. 
inhale, reach it forwards and up, just lubricating the shoulder. Exhale, circle it back and down. Body Vinyasa in Trikonasana. This is from my teacher Shiva Ray. And find the Trikonasana pose. Now keep thinking of extending the left rib cage out of the left hip, radiating through the arms as you reach that right arm diagonally forward, soften the right shoulder. Circle the right hand to the right hip, ready for Adha Chandrasana. Bend the left leg, shift the weight forwards, and float the right foot up off the floor. The heel is in line with the hip, the right foot is flexed with the toes pointing out. Right shoulder stacks on left, maybe right hand reaches up to the sky. Balanced, steady, focused, grounded. Circle the right hand to the floor and square the hips for standing splits. You could stay here again, standing splits, enjoy. Or maybe you want to work at pressing up to your handstand. Lift up onto the tippy toes. See if you can pick the left foot up off the floor. Catch a little bit of air time. Keep trying or maybe hold the handstand. When you're ready, lower the feet down between the hands just as best you can. Halfway lift, inhale, and then exhale, fold. Now this time we're standing on the palms of the hands, or if you prefer, you can just grab the big toes again. If you're standing on the palms, you're going to feed them under from the front of your feet and just fold when you're ready. Glide the shoulders down your back. Find the hips stacked over the ankles. Find length through the spine. Now when you're ready, straighten the arms, poke the chest through, release the hands from under the feet if you had them. Grab the left big toe with the first two fingers, right hand on right hip. Now stand up carrying the left leg with you. Remember you can hold your left knee if you need to instead of the big toe. Uttita Hasta Padangustasana. Draw the left shoulder back into its socket. When you're ready, you'll start to open your foot or knee out to the left. Maybe slowly gaze over the right shoulder or extend the right arm out to the right as a counterbalance. When you're ready, bring the gaze and the leg back to center. Raise the arms up, biceps next to the ears. Try not to drop the left heel at all. Keep pressing the right foot down to lift the left leg up. And then warrior three, send that left leg behind you with the heel in line with the hip. Reach the fingers forwards. Try to get the torso parallel to the mat as best you can. Pull the belly and rib cage in. And then take the hands to the floor for another standing splits. Then you're gonna step your left foot back to the back of the mat. And then inhale, raise the right leg up. And then exhale, lower the left forearm down. Funky pincha or funky peacock pose. Slide the right hand back so it's in line with the elbow. Now either work at just lifting up off the floor or maybe a little kick if you need it. Eventually holding that inversion. Steady, calm breath. Slowly you'll make your way back to downward facing dog. Coil into plank. Chaturanga on your exhale. Upward facing inhale. Pull from the core back to downward facing dog. Exhale. Make any movements or adjustments, whatever you need to do to settle the spine down, settle the breath, settle the mind. Then you'll walk your hands back towards your feet. Now, again, standing splits, you'll raise the right leg up. Same options as before, either both hands stay down or wrap behind your calf. Lower the right leg down, we'll go straight to the other side. Inhale, raise the left leg up. Walk the hands forwards and then lower the knees. Walk the hands forwards again. 
Anahatasana, you melt your heart, chin or forehead to the earth. Okay, either stay in Anahatasana or making way to the final dolphin pose. Shift forward, shoulders above elbows again, curl up the toes, straighten the legs, walk the feet in towards the elbows. Now, feel free to stay or raise the left leg up. Be on the right tippy toes, see if you can pick the right foot up off the mat, maybe finding an L shape, maybe finding a little bit of airtime, or finding the full inversion in pinch up. Eventually the gaze drops through the arms. Keep thinking of lengthening the buttocks to the heels and really try to draw, draw the belly and rib cage into the spine. When you're ready, you slowly make your way back to forearm plank. Activate the core, release your hips to the floor and untuck the toes, sphinx. Lift the heart on an inhale and release to the earth in pranam. Again, hands in prayer above the crown of the head, full body surrender. Instant stress relief when the, the head and the heart and the belly touch the earth. Now this time, Dhanurasana version 2, you're going to reach back and grab the insides of the feet. The feet can be flexed. You'll keep your thighs down and kick the legs back to lift the chest. So if this version doesn't work for you, feel free to repeat the other version or stay in Sphinx or Tricobra. Then next exhale, extend the legs back, hands next to the lower ribs. Inhale, rise upward. And then exhale, pull back to down. Facing dog. When you're ready to start to walk your feet through your hands or jump through if you like and come to sit. I had a lot of back issues this day, so I was taking it very kind of cautiously. Pashimottanasana, inhale, reach the arms up. Pull the belly in and exhale, start to fold forwards. Grab whatever's available. It could be a towel or a belt or the feet or the shins. Try to find length through the spine, extending the heart towards the feet, sliding the shoulders down towards your hips. One day stomach on thighs, chest towards knees, chin towards shins. roll up through the spine as you exhale take your hands about an elbow distance away from the waist fingers facing the same direction as the toes lift the hips up for Porta Vottanasana lengthen the crown back try to get the feet down flat next exhale release the hips down now shuffle forwards, bending the legs, making your way onto your back. You can reach your arms forward, slowly engage the core to roll down vertebrae by vertebrae or just come down onto your back. Setting up for bridge pose now, fingertips almost touching the heels. Press down through the feet and lift the hips up. Now, option to just rest or do bridge breathing or interlace the fingers underneath you. Reaching the knuckles to the space between your heels and lifting the hips up towards the sky. Now try to lengthen the buttocks to the back of the knees, reach the heart towards the face. Find the power in the legs, sending the inner thighs down towards the mat. When you're ready, Slowly release the spine, coming down vertebrae by vertebrae. Just let the knees knock together and gather some energy for a second set. The second set could be a repeat of a bridge, or maybe you want to take it deeper to Urdhvadhanarasana wheel pose, okay? So if you have a regular wheel practice, you're feeling pretty open, feel free to do that. So first you'll lift your hips up and you'll take your fingers under your shoulders if you're coming to full wheel. You can press up onto the crown of the head first and then magnetize the shins towards the elbows and the elbows towards the shins. 
when you press down and lift up, really find the power in your legs. Send those inner thighs down towards the mat again. Try to get shoulders above wrists. Keep lengthening through the spine even though you're back bending. Think of the buttocks to the back of the knees. And then when you're ready, you'll tuck your chin towards your chest and slowly release down vertebrae by vertebrae. Let the knees knock together, gather some energy for another set. Now again, it can be bridge. You could do bridge breathing, you could rest. Or maybe you wanna try coming into wheel again. If you're coming to wheel, you lift your hips up, you take your fingers underneath your shoulders. You can press up onto the crown of the head first, adjust whatever needs to be adjusted. You can press down through the feet, press down through the hands, lift the hips up. Keep pressing through the feet. Keep active in the legs like you're squeezing a block between the legs. Keep pressing the palms down. Find the strength in the arms. Keep the breath calm. Try to just meditate while you're here. Let this pose bring medicine and healing. When you're ready to take yourself out of your experience, you'll do that. Find Supta Bharakanasana. Soles of the feet together, knees wide, hands on the heart and stomach. Settle the spine, settle the pelvis, settle the breath. Once the breath is settled, you can bring the legs back in. Now you're going to wrap your right leg over the top of your left like a twisted root. And then on an exhalation, you're going to take both legs over to the left. Try to soften the right shoulder as you extend the right arm out to the right. Try to let the neck be nice and spacious. The left hand can either rest on top of the right knee for some extra weight or just find your variation of a supine twist, whatever's comfortable for you. Let the breath be nice and restorative into the rib cage. just a little bit of core strength to bring the legs back to center set it up over the other side binding left leg over right you'll take both legs over to the right left arm will extend out to the left left shoulder nice and soft breath deep and restorative into the left rib cage really just drink in the breath let it go to any of these tight areas of the body recharging the spine. When you're ready, you'll come back to center. Give the knees a little bit of a squeeze in. side either just leg raise towards the sky or maybe you want to place a rolled up towel or a block under the sacrum for Viparita Karani or if you can bring your legs all the way up over your head to Halasana you'll bring your hands into your lower back you'll extend the feet towards the sky for your shoulder stand now it's important in shoulder stand that you're on your shoulders not your shoulder blades so visualize a nice straight line. So you'll know if you're in a straight line or not. A lot of the time I see people, they're in a dish shape in this position. You really want to send the hips forwards and find a straight line. Next exhale, you might lower the right leg over the head towards the floor, but keep the left leg where it is. So try not to compromise the angle of that left leg. Inhale, raise the right leg up. Exhale, lower the left leg down. the left leg up and exhale take both legs over your head towards the floor so either rest the knees on the forehead so as that's what I'm doing here just because of my back 
or if you can, you can extend your feet towards the floor. Slowly release your spine, vertebrae by vertebrae, back into the mat. Matsyasana fish pose, prop yourself up onto your elbows and forearms. Expand the chest, let the crown of the head lightly touch the mat. Legs can either be straight or crossed or in lotus, depending on your practice. When you're ready, you'll tuck the chin towards the chest. Slowly release the spine back into the mat. Give the knees a brief little squeezing or any last minute movements you feel like you need to make before Shavasana. When you're ready for Shavasana, extend your heels towards the front of your mat. Lengthen your buttocks towards your heels or just let the legs soften. Try to notice any subtle sensations in the lower body. Try to get a sense of this oxygenated blood moving through the legs, hamstrings, just fueling the muscles, ligaments, joints. Try to relax the spine now, let it settle and get a sense that energy radiates from the spine out into the rest of the body. As the shoulders relax down your mat, the arms will also relax and the palms will face the sky. If you notice any subtle sensations in your palms, fingertips. Now let the neck be spacious and let all the facial muscles relax, particularly the jaw, lips. Try to even let the eyelids relax. The forehead wants to relax and you might notice any sensations in the space between the eyebrows. Even visualize the crown of your head, the scalp relaxing. So the whole body really wants to surrender to the mat now. Just letting all the juice of the practice, all this healing from the moving meditation, just let it go wherever it needs to go the most. Notice how the practice was for you. Was it forced? Was it strained in any way? Did you lose the control of your breath? Just know that you did your best. And really just know that every time you step on your mat, you really just should honor the courage it takes to, to do that. of the breath, letting the body relax. stay here as long as you like relaxing and when you're ready you can start to bring gentle movement back to your toes and fingers maybe take a full body stretch when you're ready you can roll off to one side and use your arm like a pillow and just be there for a few breaths resting your heart before you return back out into your everyday world slowly keeping this nice quality of calm make your way to a comfortable seated position let the spine be uplifted the crown of the head extend towards the sky the hands return to Anjali at the heart space always returning to the heart acknowledge the practice the effort that you made and then bow the forehead to the earth Thank you for watching, thank you for practicing, more coming soon, namaste.